Donna and Nicole are back again for the last time, sadly, in this Andy Sedaris Triple B series movie. I think it's the worst one so far. This is fit to kill. I'm Jay Harang and I waste hours of my life watching terrible films. You should subscribe. We start, of course, with agents Donna and Nicole splashing around in this waterfall before being summoned to a training exercise with two other agents, Nicole's boyfriend Bruce Christian and Shane Abilene. It's some sort of paintball thing and the girls win. Yes. Yeah. We'll see you at Lucas's checkpoint. <laughs> and immediately we get a remote control helicopter. This thing starts shooting at them and they're like, oh, this isn't part of the exercise, but it is. It was low budget Lucas, the head of the agency, playing with it. He tells them all how good this helicopter is. It's got really powerful rockets and a camera on the front so the operator can fly it from anywhere. Really? Cut to KSXY Radio Molokai, which is now totally pointless. Apart from the fact it has a hot tub so we can see people naked in it. Oh, I see. Now we're in Las Vegas with Kane, an international criminal played in a previous film by Pat Morita, who the agency has a tracker on, thanks to his girlfriend Silk, who's undercover working for Low Budget Lucas. She's been shopping and wants to show no longer Japanese Kane what she's bought. I had a great day today. How do you like this? This is for Mr. Tang's party. This is for after the party. And then they bang. From that, I hope you picked up that someone called Mr. Chang is having a party. And here's a new character. Her name is Blue Steel. What? Yes, Blue Steel. And she's doing some Tai Chi or whatever this is in a bikini before taking off and getting into this catsuit thing. She's sneaking around no longer Japanese Kane's hotel and shoots him. <laughs> He's not dead though. He was wearing a bulletproof vest. He doesn't seem too bothered about this attempt on his life. Perhaps you'll join me for dinner. Back in Molokai, Low Budget Lucas has called an agency meeting at the radio station so the agents can all be in the hot tub in swimwear. Boys will be boys. He tells them that a very important businessman, Mr. Chang, is having a party at his house in Maui in two days. Chang has requested that all the agents attend the party to provide security. This Russian guy Petrov is coming and he's the guest of honour. Back at no longer Japanese Kane's hotel, he's having dinner with Blue Steel. It turns out she was hired to kill him by his former associate, Genghis Poe. Poe is pissed off because the nuclear trigger he was supposed to sell to the Middle Eastern faction in the last film disappeared. As you may or may not remember, this guy Raven had it in his gyrocopter, but he was killed by one of the agents. Donna Hamilton. No longer Japanese Kane has planned his revenge on Donna, and he wants Blue Steel to help him. And what's in it for me? I will repay Poe for the lost device. You will repay Poe for failing to kill me. So they leave for Hawaii in two hours. Donna, Nicole and Bruce go to Chang's house to meet him. Wow, that's big. Have you heard of the Alexa Diamond? They have not. So he tells them a story about it using loads of World War II footage that goes on and on and on. When that's finally finished, he gets the diamond out. It's exquisite. Whatever. Chang wants to give this diamond to the Russians to celebrate their newfound freedom and he plans to present it to Petrov at his party. Then the agents ask to see the guest list and there's a familiar name on it. Martin Kane is on this list. Oh, his name's Martin now, is it? Masakane Kaneshiro. You Americans like to call me Kane. Don't you worry about that. Kane? That bastard tried to have us killed. I can't wait for a chance to meet him face to face. Nicole reminds them, and the audience, about the tracking device Silk put around his neck, so they're gonna know exactly where he is at all times. Blue Steel is off to collect something from this guy Emerson. Listen to this ridiculous exchange of innuendos. Do you have the goods? I was born with them. Oh yeah? Let's see. Oh look, it's a remote control helicopter. Wow. It's quite a piece of machinery you have there, Flyboy. It's long. It's quick. It's hard. Dangerous. It's aggressive. Deadly. Okay. You got my money? Almost everything you want is right here. Almost. Catch you later. Drive carefully. As Emerson rides off on his bike, Blue decides she's going to test the helicopter out on him. Yeah. yeah. So she's got the helicopter for free. Cut to Agent Ava, who's been sent to pick up Petrov. And there's this tired old joke when his assistant clocks the car. An American Mustang convertible. And I bet you can guess what's coming. Five liter V8 engine. I must to drive it, please. In America, anything is possible. Some good old 80s propaganda there, even though this film came out in 1993. And here we are at the party and everyone's arrived, including no longer Japanese Kane's henchman Burke, who's posing as Duke de Ventre. 
And here's Kane. He bumps into Donna and somehow manages to get her to dance with him. Oh God, Edie is singing. Edie is low budget Lucas's girlfriend and there seems to always be an excuse for her to sing. After that's finally finished, Blue Steel goes upstairs and knocks out a security guard. No longer Japanese Kane goes up too and Donna follows him. No longer Japanese Kane tells Donna that he plans to go straight and forces himself on her while Blue Steel takes a photo of them. I'm tired of your games, Mr. Kane. Sweet dreams, Donna. Then Blue steals the Alexa diamond and no longer Japanese Kane pretends he was knocked out too. She drops the diamond out the window to Burke, who puts it in, that's right, a remote control helicopter. Do me a favour. Chang is about to present the diamond to Petrov when... The diamond's been stolen! <gasps> oh no! Then Burke calls this guy and tells him to fly the helicopter to the yacht. But they've already arrived on the yacht, so why was the helicopter even necessary? Anyway, back at Chang's house, low-budget Lucas is like, Look, Kane, we know one of your people pretended to be Duke de Vontra and stole the diamond. But he's like, I was upstairs with Donna the whole time. So he goes back to his yacht where Silk, Burke and Blue Steel are waiting. He and Silk go into his room and then they bang. This leaves just you and me, Captain Burke. Let's get the celebration underway. Obviously can't show much for the next few minutes, but I'd like to draw attention to Blue Steel trying to be sexy with the tap. <laughs> That's absurd. Anyway, then they bang. The next day, no longer Japanese Kane has hired these two guys, Evil and Knievel, to kill low-budget Lucas and his girlfriend Edie. Evil and Knievel? They're code names. Knievel admires no longer Japanese Kane's pendant, the one with the tracker in it, but he's distracted by the women and somehow manages to pull it off his neck. Whoops. I think I should take this into town and have it repaired. Too dangerous. I'll send Captain Burke. So now the tracker is on Burke. Evil and Knievel have decided the best way to eliminate low-budget Lucas and Edie is with, yes, a remote control vehicle. So they buy this thing. Donna, Nicole and Bruce have seen the tracker moving. So Bruce and Nicole are off to follow who they think is no longer Japanese Kane. And Donna is going to keep an eye on his boat. The jewellery store Burke's taken the pendant into for repair is getting robbed. And the robbers take the tracker from Burke. So now Bruce and Nicole are following them. That could backfire. Low budget Lucas is on the beach with Edie. He takes loads of photos of her and then they bang. Evil and Knievel try to kill them with a remote control car but it backfires and then they're arrested. Bruce and Nicole get to the robber's hideout. It's not the sort of place no longer Japanese Kane would hang out but the tracker says he's in there so they shoot everyone. At least now they know the tracker's no good. True. Donna, who's keeping an eye on the boat, sees a guy approaching it with a gun. She's about to follow him but is grabbed by one of his friends. Oh. I better check on that. Ah! So Blue Steel has turned on no longer Japanese Kane. She's working for Genghis Poe, who wants the diamond. But the diamond is fake. It was all some sort of setup. So Poe's men tie up no longer Japanese Kane and Donna and drive the boat away. Do you know where they're taking us? To the estate of Chang, I'd imagine, to get the real diamond. They set you up to steal a fake. Chang gets to make his gesture without actually giving up the real diamond. Yes, of course. Now things are beginning to make sense. Yes. Okay, so it turns out that World War II story Chang told at the beginning was relevant, and apparently Chang stole the diamond from Kane's father. He's no longer no longer Japanese Kane, as apparently he used to be German. Anyway, Chang killed Kane's parents, so Kane spent his entire life plotting revenge on him. When they arrive at Chang's estate, they untie Donna and Kane, which allows Donna to grab the fake diamond. Chang plans to send Kane and Donna back to the yacht, then blow it up, make it look like they were lovers planning to steal the diamond. Smart. He has the photos of them kissing at the party, thanks to Blue Steel. Finally. I will be rid of you, Kane. Kane tells Chan that Genghis Poe isn't who he says he is, and everyone seems to turn on everyone. It's going to take too long to explain, but then there's this fight. Oh, oh. Poe and Blue Steel get to the yacht and start attacking the agents with Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yep. A remote control helicopter. But it's okay, because low budget Lucas and Edie have turned up with a remote control helicopter. This ridiculous battle between remote control helicopters is crap and it goes on for ages, but finally low budget Lucas wins. Yes! But Blue Steel gets her real gun out and shoots him.
Then Donna takes over the controls and blows the boat up. Yes. My work is done here. Yeah. So the diamond finally gets to Petrov, and Donna gets this envelope delivered. Next time, Donna Hamilton. Next time, Mr. Kane. Now that Kane's boat has blown up, he sits in this dinghy instead. I don't understand. Cut to the gang celebrating with champagne in the hot tub, and that's the end of the film. So until next time. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe, and check out this other video. Thank you.